All right, so what we're looking at here is um, many views of components from a Formula One uh, differential slash transmission housing. Um, nowadays, uh, most design is not done in a homogeneous environment. It actually is done uh, across many different platforms. And the reality is that while uh, Formula One teams typically are responsible for building their chassis, building their engine, um, they also tend to farm out and, uh, I don't want to say sell, but they basically allocate uh, engines and you have to keep in mind here that the engine and transmission housing you know essentially from where the driver sits aft uh, is a very it's an integral part of the structure of the of the car um, the engine the engine block as well as the transmission and differential housing themselves uh, are stressed members of the frame of the car so uh, essentially there are, I'll give you an example there are teams that use Ferrari engines and transmissions and differentials and those teams typically you know they're purchasing these components from Ferrari but there's a lot of stuff that they have to do themselves for example the differential that you see here this differential housing that's custom built uh, we're looking into the, the uh, transmission tunnel right here and they will have based on the tracks that they race on over the course of the year they will have transmission cartridges that they can swap in and out of there so the teams typically will do there's a lot of these components that they will build themselves uh, and a lot of the components are sold to them or basically provided to them by uh, the company that they purchased them, in this case, uh, you know, Ferrari. Um, so in this instance, the company that's using this transmission and differential which have been supplied to them have to ensure that based on their requirements for, you know, their differential design, their transmission cartridge that's going in there, they have to ensure that the components that they're getting from the vendor in this case Ferrari, are going to stand up to the stresses that they are going to be subjecting them to. So what we're doing here is essentially we, you know, we have a combination here of parts that came from multiple platforms. Uh, those platforms in this case were Katia, uh, some Pro Engineer, and there's a lot of inventor designs that you see here. The, the, the differential that you're looking at right here was done completely in inventor. This this cover right here for the transmission housing, however, was a Katia part, and we're able to import that Katia part, and then, let me show you the process here, we essentially just go to this part, and we can isolate that, and then, escape there for a second, and the, the, the process is essentially, we, we go up with a, a dumb part, and we have a command here called find features, and what find features allows us to do, it's a recognition, um, it's a feature recognition tool and it allows us to select a solid and it goes through and it looks at the geometry and based on the configuration of the geometry can figure out uh, holes, circular patterns, um, extrusions, revolves, and chamfers, fillets, and it basically classifies and builds all, it basically builds a feature structure even though this tool that we're using right now is Inventor Fusion and it's a, it's a direct modeling product so it, it's feature-less it allows you to model and it, it recognizes features, but it's not, uh, it's not feature dependent. There is no feature history here. Uh, that's the beauty of, that's essentially the beauty of this, uh, this product. So once we essentially read in the CATIA part, run it through feature recognition, we can then go, let me open it up in its own, I have the isolated version of it right here. So here's the part all by itself. And once we have it like that, there are a lot of parts on here that we may or may not uh, need to take to our analysis tool. Ultimately, the goal here is to take this part, go to analysis, make sure that what we're being supplied is going to stand up to the loads that it's going to see uh, in the course of operation. So the, the, we have this simplify tool, and what the simplify tool allows me to do is essentially it does feature recognition. So it walks through the model. And for example, um, this one I've already simplified once, so you'll notice there are no fillets on it. There are some chamfers. But this tool allows me to walk through the model and essentially find features based on this criteria. Once I have found those features, I can then choose to either delete them um, from this individual part prior to going to analysis. The goal being that you know, once we get to analysis, we really want to simplify the model to the point where we're looking at the major structural integrity of the part without um, superfluous fe features. And superfluous features would be uh, features that are on the model that aren't going to contribute or take away from the results when, once we get to analysis. So once we're at that point, we then can essentially, literally, just uh, 
we use the Autodesk simulation tool and it literally pushes this geometry over into simulation. Now this model, uh, as you can see over here, it, it takes a bit of setup to get it to this point where we can do uh, the analysis on it. I, I've turned the visibility of these off, but as you can see, um, there's, you know, we basically select a face. I'll, I'll walk you through the process. Let's turn that off. We essentially select a face and then we're going to add uh, a boundary condition. So in this case, this is the face, the mounting face of that, uh, the cover, and that is going to be bolted down onto the, if we come back over to this window, I love this infusion, being able to just quickly select that. So that's the mounting face where it attaches to the transmission cartridge uh, access. And so essentially what we could do here is then just assign a fixed constraint. And what it does is it, it basically tells the analysis tool that this face here is not going to move at all. Uh, from that point forward, what we did was select all the other faces on the model and we assigned pressure to it. So, and that's the reason for me having this preset up because as you can imagine, it takes quite a while to select all those faces. Um, it's, it's advantageous though because I mean if you look five years ago you couldn't even do analysis like this so it's you know th this is a we're at a really great point in engineering these days because we can you know we have all these tools that allow us to uh, simulate reality so once all of those you know once I've assigned my boundary conditions once I've assigned my loads which in this case it's relatively low I'll show you it's um, if we go ahead and edit that we're looking at about 1.5 newtons per millimeter of pressure on all of those inside faces so that is the nominal operating pressure the maximum pressure that's built up on the inside of the transmission housing while the transmission is in operation. And if we go and look at the results, so here are our results. Let me go to the options and we'll turn this so we can actually rotate it and see some shading. Now that's an exaggerated view there. So let's go back to the result contours and we will not show it in displaced form. Okay. Now this, this model actually shows me after I went in and edited it. The one that's here doesn't have the reinforcements and the workflow that I went through, it, it takes about uh, you know, 20 to 25 minutes to get through this entire um, workflow, which is something that a, you know, an engineer, is, is considering the fact that you know, five, ten years ago this wasn't even doable in a week, uh, the fact that we're able to do something like this in 20 minutes speaks volumes. The fact that we're able to do it on an HP laptop or a laptop period is just mind-blowing. Uh, and when you factor in the, the graphic performance that we're looking at here, it's just literally, I, I've said this before and I'll say it again, we are in a golden age of engineering these days. In any case, um, you know, once we're here, we're looking at the results and the workflow was, um, you know, come over here, test the part. In this case, the part did, it was, it was expanding a little more, almost up like 1.2 millimeters. And with a relatively simple fix of adding these reinforcing ribs, we were able to get that deflection down to, if we go to our displacement here, and you can see our displacement is now a little, well, you can't see it because it's micro text, uh, but I can read it very well. It's like 0 0.08 millimeters. So we're not, seeing, we're not seeing an excessive amount of deflection based on the load that's, that's being imparted to this. Uh, and another nice ability here is the ability to be able to animate how those loads are going to be distributed on the part. There we go. There we go. Okay. So now you can see graphically, you know, over the course of, in this case, we're looking at one second of, of load, you know, load being applied and load coming off in a one second period. And this is how those stresses are distributed along the part. 